Hey Barbie! Hey Barbie! Hey Barbie! Hiya Barbie! <laughs> hey Barbie! Hey Barbies! I mean, hey cuties! And welcome back to my channel for another video. If you want to join the cuties fam, all you gotta do is hit that subscribe button, the like button, and the little bell icon to get notified when I make new videos. All my socials will be linked down below, including my Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Cameo, Patreon, Discord, my podcast, anything you can support me on will all be linked down below. Before we jump into this video, I want to give a big shout out to all of my patrons. You guys keep this channel running and I love you so much. Thank you for all your love and support. Today, we're going to give a specific shout out to a new patron. Thank you so much, Eric Danielson, for all your love and support. It means the world to me that you've joined Patreon and I can't thank you enough. With that being said, let's jump into the video. So, if you can't tell by my outfit, we will be talking about the Barbie movie today. Now, men seem to have a lot of criticisms about the Barbie movie lately, but you'll be surprised, I actually have my own criticisms about it too. But we'll get into that. Right now, Barbie is on track to being the highest earning movie in 2023, and it's already broken so many box office records. Women everywhere have fallen in love with the Barbie movie. So it makes you wonder, why do men dislike it so viscerally? Is it because it's directed by a female director with a largely female cast? Is it because men just can't consume media in which they're not being centered? Is it the conservatives crying about the woke agenda and toxic feminism again? Or maybe, just maybe, there was just a little bit too much pink. Either way, this movie has been quite the topic of discussion amongst many different groups of people. It even brought Ben Shabibo himself to burn a Barbie doll. Who knew a movie about a literal doll could be so controversial? Some of the core themes in this movie include identity, self-discovery, perfectionism, girlhood slash womanhood, patriarchy, gender systems and hierarchies, and systemic oppression. Obviously, it's touching on some very serious topics. From my understanding of the movie, it's basically like a long metaphor for losing innocence as a child turned young teen and finally learning about patriarchy and inequality and these gender systems and hierarchies and systemic oppression and how there's just so much inequality in the world. It's losing that innocence as a child when you find out about these things that like naivety, that ignorance, and what that means for both girls and boys growing up. How both of them learn about it and how it affects them differently. That was kind of my understanding of the movie in its like basic form. I'm gonna be going over the plot really quickly just so we have a full understanding of the movie before we get into all the commentaries and criticisms on it. So if you haven't seen the movie and you want to watch it, I'd suggest either skipping this part or going and watching the movie and then coming back and watching this video. We are gonna go over the plot, my understanding of it, then the men's understanding of it and their criticisms, and then finally my criticisms of the movie. So the plot goes as such. Barbie Land exists. And in Barbie land, the Barbies live perfect lives with perfect hair and perfect outfits and their perfect Barbie dream houses alongside their lesser companions, the Kens. Think of this as like the proletariat and the barboisie. <coughs> I win the award for corniest joke, but you got to admit that was kind of funny. Get it? Because it's like the proletariat, like the working class and the bourgeoisie, the ruling class. Come on, it was a funny joke, just laugh. Anyways, every day in Barbie land is perfect. Until one day. Stereotypical Barbie begins experiencing existential thoughts of death. Her perfectly healed feet turn flat. She falls from her house instead of floating. And worst of all, she develops cellulite. Now as a cellulite girly myself, I was a little offended that this was her last straw. She was like flat feet. I can deal with that. A concussion from falling from my Barbie dream house? Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Never ending thoughts of impending doom and death? Eh. But cellulite. That's where I draw the line. That's when things get serious. We gotta do something about this, boys. Really? Cellulite, guys? So to figure out what's going on with stereotypical Barbie, she needs to visit Weird Barbie, which I loved this part because... Didn't we all have a weird Barbie? I know I did. I used to cut off all her hair and I would draw on her face. I would put her in weird outfits and I would tie her to my ceiling fan and 
let her spin until she couldn't hold on anymore. I feel so bad for Weird Barbie. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Weird Barbie tells her that in order for things to go back to normal, she must connect with her human owner in the real world to repair the issue. So Barbie and Ken head to the real world. Barbie is faced with unwanted attention, catcalls, SA, rejection, and criticism for the unrealistic standards Barbie has placed on women. Barbie had previously thought while she was living in Barbie land that Barbie had saved women and had abolished inequality because Barbie can be anything, therefore the human woman can be anything. Little did she know that not only was the world unequal still, but Barbie had actually made things a little bit harder for women with the unrealistic beauty standards she set. Barbie sets out to find her owner, which ends up being a mother-daughter duo, Gloria and Sasha. Gloria being the one affecting Barbie and Sasha being her very woke, anti-capitalist feminist daughter. Ken splits up and has a vastly different experience in the real world. He learns that the real world is a patriarchy controlled by men. And here men are celebrated and treated with respect. This is so different from the world he lives in, and he wants to bring the patriarchy home to Barbie land. Meanwhile, Barbie gets in trouble with the Mattel CEO and executives for leaving Barbie land, and they attempt to put her back in her box. She escapes, and Gloria and Sasha rescue her, and they all head back to Barbie land together. When they arrive in Barbie land, they realize that it's now called Kendom. The Kens are running the show, and they've brainwashed the Barbies. The Barbies are now catering to the Kens and acting subservient to them. All of the Barbie dream houses have been turned into Mojo Dojo Casa houses, which was actually really funny. Barbie is devastated by this, obviously. Gloria then delivers a speech about womanhood, inequality, and how the world should be, which they realize deprograms one of the brainwashed Barbies. This empowers the Barbies to rise up and kidnap each brainwashed Barbie, deliver a speech to her, and deprogram her. Once all the Barbies are deprogrammed, they rise up and pit the Kens against each other. While the Kens are fighting each other, which men love to do. The Barbies vote on the constitution and restore Barbie land, giving more power to the Kens this time. Barbie in the end forgives Ken and also apologizes to him. She encourages Ken to figure out who he is as an individual apart from her, assuring him that he is in fact Kenuff. The real world impacted Barbie so deeply, she doesn't know if she can continue living in Barbie land. She wants to be more than an idea. She wants to be the one creating the ideas. She has a heart to heart with Ruth Handler, who is the creator of Barbie, who gives her the power to become human. The movie ends with Barbie taking on the name Barbara and entering the real world to attend her first ever gynecology appointment. So that is the plot of the movie. Sorry if that took a little while. I needed to get through that. This movie was directed by Greta Gerwig, who, if you don't know who this is, she's also the director of Lady Bird and Little Women. So she's very well known for her kind of like feminist takes and commentaries on womanhood. In an interview, she said this quote about the movie. Young girls are funny and brash and confident, and then they just stop. How is this journey the same thing that a teenage girl feels? All of a sudden she thinks I'm not good enough. That's why I think the core kind of message and like theme of this movie is about girlhood and our experiences growing up as young girls and losing that innocence when we realize that the world has inequality and patriarchy and gender hierarchies and systemic oppression. We lose that innocence and we abandon our dolls and the positive beliefs associated with them. We suddenly realize that there's all these barriers to all the things that we thought we could be. You know, we grow up with Dr. Barbie and we dream of being a doctor until we realize that there's all these barriers in order for women to become doctors. And the movie's also about men growing up and realizing that they have power and realizing that patriarchy exists. I think maybe a big reason that men don't understand this movie or they dislike it so much is because as women, like we may not understand boyhood and manhood on like a personal level, but we've had enough of it like shoved in our faces from the time we're born in every wake of media and art, you know, it's, it's just everywhere. It's shoved in our faces. Womenhood and girlhood is rarely something that men dive into or analyze or even care enough to look into. Men are usually centered in everything. So when a movie is centered mainly on women and the female experience, I can see that men find it hard to empathize, relate, and digest the content they're consuming. When in reverse, women are constantly forced to digest male-centered media. And if you don't believe me, just look at how many movies actually pass the Bechdel test, which is a test that basically is like, a movie needs to have two women characters that both have names, and they need to have at least one conversation with each other that isn't about a man. And you'd be surprised how many movies do not pass that test. 
So we are constantly consuming male-centered media, male stars, male directors, movies about boyhood and manhood. And like, we find that stuff interesting. We digest that stuff. We, we think about it, we analyze it, but rarely do men want to sit down and analyze womanhood or think about womanhood or girlhood. And I think that's why they find it so hard to empathize with us or relate to us or digest stuff that is centered around us. I think that this is a big reason why men dislike the movie as a whole, because they have a hard time understanding and relating to it. And instead of diving in and swallowing the themes and concepts and really trying to understand the female experience, they end up just spitting it out and deeming it unwatchable and bad, which is a well-known thing that is done when deciding the significance of art throughout history. If a man thinks said art is good, then it's good. If a woman thinks said art is good, then it's just good for women. Which is probably what a lot of men have just chalked this movie up to as, it's good for women, but it's not good in its own right. But then we have the conservatives, who just always have something to say. Crying about the woke agenda and toxic feminism infecting our kids like the plague. Now, I physically could not sit down and analyze all like 43 minutes of Ben Shabibo's bitch fest about the Barbie movie. Okay, I did watch all 43 minutes of it, but I can't like analyze it for you guys because it's just too much. And I even wrote notes about it, but like, I'm not going to go through the whole thing. It was just so insufferable. But Brett Cooper, who is like the female Ben Shapiro, they even did they even did a like joint little video about the Barbie movie as well, because Ben Shapiro obviously like hated the Barbie movie and Brett Cooper actually loved it, which I don't really love Brett Cooper because obviously she's like a female Ben Shapiro. But when I found out she liked the Barbie movie, I was like, oh. I just love girlies. It's just girly Barbie summer. I just, she was wearing all pink and I was like, this is what it's all about. It's about women coming together and just celebrating womanhood. And I love that she loved the movie. That made me so happy. I was like, yes, girly. We're just, we're just all girlies at heart. You know what I mean? Like we're all just little girlies, like wanting to wear pink and watch Barbie. And I love that for us. I have some notes here on like, what he talked about in his video, but he spends most of the video like ranting about not understanding what age the movie was made for. Like, I think it's fairly obvious. First of all, it's a PG-13 movie. And beyond that, I think it was made for like teens and young adults and, and even older adults because Barbie's been around since like the 60s. So like people that played with Barbie for the most part are like my age and older. There were a lot of jokes that would have gone over like a young kid's head. And also there were some like more inappropriate jokes that were definitely like made for adults. And like, he's complaining so hard about this throughout his like rant. And my thing was like, did he ever complain about Transformers? Because Transformers is a kid's toy. And those movies were not meant for kids. Those were a lot. There was some inappropriate stuff in those movies too. So like, keep consistent with what you complain about because Transformers movies, and there's plenty of movies that were like, based on like kids toys that like aren't made for kids. And throughout this entire 43 minute like bitch fest, he just completely like misunderstands the entire themes and like plot of the movie. It's like he's purposefully like misunderstanding like what's going on and it's kind of annoying. There were a few points he made where I like agreed with them because I do think the plot was a little all over the place, but he was like clearly misunderstanding like what the main themes were and stuff. And uh, Ben does like a joint video with Brett Cooper about the Barbie movie because you know, obviously she liked it and he didn't. And he admits in this video that after Gloria's like feminist speech or whatever, one of his producers started like <laughs> slow clapping as a way to like insult it. And I could just not imagine being in the theater, trying to enjoy the Barbie movie in my full decked out pink outfit in my little girly Barbie summer. And I turn around only to see Ben in Shabibo and his producers making a mockery of the Barbie movie. The way I would have thrown popcorn, boo, tomato, tomato, tomato at him. Cause I would have ruined my night. 
god that would that would literally ruin my entire night i'd be so upset if i was watching the barbie movie and i turned around and saw ben shapiro behind me Ugh, horrible anyways obviously ben the entire movie is like accusing the movie of being man-hating and all of this shit i think anyone who's accusing the movie of being man-hating they're either a purposely misinterpreting the plot of the movie b ignorant or c not very bright or some mixture of the three. This movie isn't against men or women. It's clearly against systems and hierarchies that oppress individuals. It literally shows in the movie on both sides of it that any gender holding disproportionate power is going to be bad and harmful. And then Pierce Morgan goes on to say this. The core focus of Barbie is, oh God, the patriarchy. The word is used endlessly in the movie, even though most people Really me, actually. I have no real idea what patriarchy really means. I guess it means all men are evil so they can prove otherwise. I thought feminism was about equality. Why does empowering women always have to be about trashing men? And to that, I will say, to talk about the oppressed, eventually you're going to have to discuss the oppressor. You know what I mean? You can talk for as long as you want about like women's oppression and like women's rights and like the female experience. And at some point you're going to have to discuss men's role in that. I don't think empowering women needs to involve trashing men, but I do think it is important to acknowledge men's role in women's empowerment and women's oppression. It's kind of like you can't leave out one piece of the puzzle when explaining these issues. It doesn't really make sense. Before we get into my criticisms of the movie, I just want to say the set design, the casting, the costumes, the musical numbers, the soundtrack, I loved this movie. It was so like aesthetically beautiful. I loved the pink, I loved the color, I loved the you know, the casting, obviously, the actors, I thought it was really well done. I grew up on Barbies. I was obsessed with them. Now, of course, I loved my Ariel Barbies because I was a Little Mermaid stan, but I also loved my Mary Kate and Ashley Barbies. I loved my regular Barbies. I loved my weird Barbie that I tied to the ceiling fan. I loved Barbies. Now, that being said, I do have my own personal criticisms of the movie. Now, don't get me wrong. I do love some good, accessible feminism. But let's not forget, Mattel and Barbie are a capitalist company looking to market to you, the consumer, to buy more of their products. That's why they've done this movie. Not because they care about feminism. For example, the women that work in their, basically their sweatshops to create Barbies are overworked, underpaid, have to work in disgusting conditions. The exploitation of their workers is well documented. It's all girl power Barbie until you're actually talking about the women who create these Barbies who are getting treated terribly. They partnered to make this movie because they want to sell you a product and not because they care about the woman experience, but because they want to make money off of it. So I think you have to like keep that in mind when you're consuming this type of media. And don't get me wrong, I went to the Barbie movie. I've been eating up this Barbie stuff all summer. It's Barbie girl summer. I'm wearing pink. My birthday party is gonna be pink themed. So honestly, who am I to talk shit about how well they're marketing this movie? Cause they're doing a great job of it. What can I say? I love a good Barbie summer, like slay. But as a radical feminist, which I will clarify, I am not a turf. I love trans women and will always fight for trans women. Sometimes the words, rad femme and turf get kind of conflated. But as a radical feminist, I was expecting a little bit more from Greta Gerwig. And maybe that's just me having read one too many feminist literature books and I shouldn't have expected so much from a movie about a Barbie doll. I mean, totally understandable that the Barbie movie wasn't gonna have like bell hooks level discourse on very nuanced feminist topics. But I just wish she dove a bit deeper into the points that the movie was trying to make. I feel like she was just barely scratching the surface on like too many different subjects and didn't narrow in on one thing, didn't focus in on one main theme or main point. In the movie, just when you're beginning to resonate with and digest the point being made, they like pivot to something completely different. There was just too much going on with the main central themes of the movie. Now, I think I understand the movie 
for the most part. Maybe there are some things I missed here and there and didn't really understand, but for the most part, I think I understand the main concepts, main themes, and main messaging that the movie was trying to give off. The feminism just felt very performative and way too surface level. It also lacked diversity and intersectionality, not in appearances, but in the actual subject matter. Now I get the target audience maybe wasn't like feminist PhDs, but it was more for the average person getting like an introduction to feminism. And I get that you can only go so far in your commentary in a movie about a Barbie doll. Something I do love is that, you know, I love that this movie can allow feminism to be more accessible to younger audiences and audiences that may not be introduced to feminism otherwise. But I would be lying if I said I felt this movie was groundbreaking or revolutionary in any way. And on like TikTok and other platforms, I've seen like great analysis of the movie and like deeper meanings that people had gotten out of the movie. But part of me felt like people were almost like projecting deeper meanings onto the movie that like weren't actually there. But either way, I love the discourse and I think that art is up for interpretation. And however these people are interpreting it or whatever deeper meanings that they're finding within it, I think is so amazing. And I, I love watching other people's analysis and what they got out of the movie. Another thing I really didn't like was the whole Mattel storyline. It really made no sense to me and I felt like it had no effect on the main plot. I feel like they could have taken the Mattel storyline out completely and just let Barbie be in the real world a little bit longer. I would have liked more character development for Gloria and Sasha and to actually see them as real complex female characters. And you always know the saying that goes like, show don't tell. Although I thought that Gloria's feminist speech was like great and all, I would have liked for them to go by show don't tell, you know? Instead of saying all of these things, it would have been better for Barbie to like experience more of them in the real world. Like a lot of the things that Gloria said in her speech, like why didn't you take out the Mattel storyline, have Barbie like stay the night with Gloria and Sasha and experience some of these things that women go through with Gloria and Sasha and maybe explore that like mother-daughter relationship too and motherhood and like how difficult that is on women. And I wish they would have explored the female experience a little bit deeper in the real world. It just felt like they kind of, she got catcalled and like her ass slapped and like all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, there's, a, but there's so much more that women go through than just that. Um, and it would have been cool to see Barbie like experience more of that in the real world. I'm also hoping that if they didn't explore more of these like women experience themes within the first movie, I'm hoping that there'll be a second movie in order for Barbie or Barbara to be exploring these themes a little bit deeper because I think they could have done so much more and I think they could have focused in and narrowed in more on their main points that they were trying to make instead of just trying to hit like 20,000 different feminist points that are so nuanced, but like only just mentioning them. Overall, I think the movie just like wasn't enough for me. I felt like the feminism was really like corny almost, but maybe that's just as someone who's like really deep into feminism and like people that maybe aren't on the same level as me saw it as very like groundbreaking and like revolutionary for them, which is so amazing. And I love that they're making feminism accessible, but I thought it was very like white, girl boss feminism. You know what I mean? That's just what the movie kind of felt like to me. Overall, I liked the movie. I thought the feminism could have been a bit better, um, but my criticisms are obviously a lot different than the male criticism that have been going around. <laughs> Theirs was that I was too feminist. Mine is that it's not feminist enough. So I think we have very different um, takes on the movie. But other than that, I really loved it. I hope there's a second movie in which she dives into these um, topics a little bit deeper in the real world. That's all I think I have to say for this video. I, you know, really enjoyed the movie. It was funny. I loved the little quips. I thought there was a lot of tongue in cheek humor, which I find that was the stuff that people was, was going over people's heads. Like Ben Shapiro didn't understand half the jokes that the movie was making. I, I know that for a fact. There was a lot of tongue in cheek humor about like leftism and stuff like that, but I, I think people just like didn't, that just went over people's heads and they just thought the movie was trying to be woke when it was really just like tongue in cheek humor. Anyways, that's all I have to say for this video. Remember to like, comment and subscribe down below because you know I appreciate that so much. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Peace.